Dr. Mark Changizi here with your science moment. Today I'm going to talk about how the more unreasonable the request, the more draconian the intervention, the more the general populace tends to think that it's justified. Right? So let's just back up here. And, uh, this is just sort of, I'm going to talk about really just one of many multidimensional kinds of um, uh, mechanisms that undergirded the collective hysteria and the acceptance of the government's narrative uh, and just the general narrative was, you know, that it was occurring within the uh, COVID hysterical uh, community. Um, and one of those mechanisms comes down to uh, something that we all, or many of us know in our bones, some more than others, and something that Dr. Tim Barber and I discuss in detail in our new book, uh, Expressly Human. Um, and it concerns, let me, let me give you, let me sort of give you an example of it. And actually this came up, you know, 20 years ago uh, at some pool party and uh, it was a bunch of medical students and they were becoming really rowdy and it was at a pool at an apartment complex and it was late at night, like maybe 10, 30, 11, 11, 30, and they were uh, getting way out of control. And so, so one of the guys who lived in the apartment complex came down and I think, you know, you could have two different ways that you might handle it. Right? Someone might just come down and say, hey, excuse me, you guys, can you be 10% less loud uh, because we're trying to sleep up here? And it sounds like, you know, or maybe 20%, something that pushes it to exactly the level that would be reasonable, uh, for example. Um, and often that kind of negotiation tactic may not work. They go, well, first of all, who, who are you? that you're even asking us this. We already have, you know, the, the rights to use this because we applied for the permit for to have it from this hour to that hour and there was no, you know, there was no nothing in that little contract that says we can't have a good time and whatever. But instead, here's what the person did who had very good bones in terms of how to handle these situations. And so the guy, acting more like a police officer uh, rather than an apartment, you know, just a guy that lived in the apartments, said, party's over. He didn't ask them just to keep it down. He just, just announced the party is over. He went over and turned on some lights. Um, everybody out. Party's over. That was great. You guys had a good time, but at the fuck out and just sort of you out. I, the party's over. You gotta leave. And there was just a, an extreme degree of confidence, not belligerence, but just of calm confidence that the decision had been made in a very extreme authoritarian from one guy top down to everybody at this party. Uh, and everybody packed up and left, you know? And I was the only guy, I was curious because I wasn't really part of that party. And I just said, I said, are you, are you work for the police? Are you security here? And he said, no, I'm, I don't, I'm not, right? So uh, had he asked for less, he would have gotten less. Um, he wouldn't have even gotten that. He had to ask for more. What this amounted to was a tremendous bluff. And whenever we're uh, arguing with, with folks, all of the arguments that we engage in um, are, are either emotionally express, emotionally expressive or are just in words that are doing the same thing, saying, I, I should get more and I'm not kidding around. And the, or, or, or I should get more and I'm open to more conversation. There's many different, we can ask for more or less and we can get more serious or less serious. And all of the emotional expressions are in fact, as we argue in our book, are explained by this. But when you ask for more, whether I saying I'm, I'm, I'm more, you know, uh, I'm very confident in my position, or I say you're not very confident, that's for sure showing disdain. Um, I bet reputation. I, what makes me honest, to the extent that we're honest in these conversations, is that the more confidence that I show in myself, or the more disdain I signal about you, the more that I have bet reputation. So in, in the actual conversations that we often do, we're not actually amassing evidence. The real evidence that makes you believe 99% of the stuff that you believe is the confidence in, or the reputations that are bet uh, of all the people in your social network that are saying things, the high reputation people who are saying things confidently and thereby putting more reputation at stake. When they say that, you go, I, I believe them because they're saying it, they're, one, they're high reputation and they're putting more reputation on the line. Um, and, and the more confidently they say it or the more disdain they, they, they say it about their opponents, the more you're likely to believe them because they're betting something, right? So this is, that's, that's the kind of um, underlying mathematics, the poker mathematics that explains why the more extreme the ask, the more likely you are to think that it's a justified ask. Because why else would they be putting in all this reputation? They're pushing in all this reputation or they're betting all of this money in actual poker because they're really confident they have a better hand. Right? So in the case of the interventions, an, a typical reaction that you often would get to folks, you can say, look, 
Um, these are extremely draconian, right? They're extremely civil rights violating. They are um, uncomfortable and they're hurting people's lives, right? They're either covering over, you know, faces and breathing holes all day, people are getting fired, businesses are getting shut down, people are being directed as to where to go and, you know, not leave their homes, put on quarantine, you know, put on home quarantine, children are being kicked out of school, bodily autonomy is being violated. At each stage, these asks were big demands, big, big demands. And the average person is like, well, yeah, they, they must, the CDC really must know what they're talking about. They must have had great evidence. Why, why must they have had great evidence, you ask? Because they asked for so damned much. They wouldn't have asked for so damned much in terms of economic consequences, psychosocial consequences in the face of violating all of these civil rights sorts of things. Asking for all of that they did could not possibly have been done by them if it were not for the, if it were not the case that they didn't have if it were not the case that they had evidence. Right? Great evidence justifying. So. Um, of course, as we've seen over the last last two years, and as we argued in, in, in Team Reality, argued that there was no evidence, right? And now, more and more, we found there was no evidence for the you know for the the things that go over your face. There was no evidence that you would lock down folks like you would like. There would be no evidence that you should ever uh, banish the unvaccinated from society. That wasn't ever a thing. It doesn't even make sense, even if, if vaccines worked exactly like they said that they were 100 percent effective. That was never sensible. But when you're violating all of these, um, you, it, 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 when you're making an extreme push of reputation, as the government did, CDC did, world, all over the world, well, that comes with a, an association, which is that they must have the justification for it, because why else would they be doing it? Right? And it's not just, and I, I don't want you to think that, oh, like politicians and the public policy people are, are thinking to themselves, yeah, we could go with strategy one, which is asking for something that we is reasonable and evidence-based and hope that people will do versus um, versus asking for this gigantic thing uh, because people are actually more likely to, to believe we have the evidence backing this gigantic thing because they'll think, why else would they have asked for this gigantic draconian thing unless we have, they're not consciously thinking that through. These things get selected for. When they ask for something bigger, people then start to get behind it and go, yeah, because they wouldn't ask for that if it weren't the case that it was justified. These things get selected for, not so much that there's these, these folks with these antennae that really understand psychosocial dynamics, right? And even people who think that they do, which I'm, you know, I'm struggling to try to, after the fact, ex explain these things, is what we're doing at, free, at the Free Expression Research Institute. That's very different from ahead of time planning it out, you know, post hoc explanations of what's going on, very different from, you know, uh, doing this in advance, right? So this goes some way towards understanding why it is individually many of the folks that you know that you're trying that you think they're brainwashed. And of course, there's, they, they are brainwashed. That's, that's exactly what happened. Their networks brainwashed them. But one of the many features that contributed to this was the degree, the ex high degree of the ask being, de de being demanded upon the public itself provided its own justification because why else would they have done it? So at the individual level, this is what they're thinking to themselves. Yeah, there's just no way that the, the CDC would do this if they didn't have all this evidence. And prima facie, that's a good argument. That's usually the case, right? It's just not the case when everybody starts having a group think and then these things aren't, aren't in fact defended with any justification like they would normally be under when the, when the, when the network is uh, functioning normally. Uh, so that was your science moment. Uh, for those that are interested in these kinds of things, get yourself a copy of Tim Barber in my new book, Expressly Human, which is out, about the foundations of emotional, ex emotional expressions. It's about the foundations of exactly these kinds of psychosocial forces, how communities bet, how individuals bet reputation, and people believe them on the basis of those bets, not the evidence that they, that they, you know, that they show. It's not the p-values, it's how much they bet. Oh, and this is something else I want to say politicians, public policy folks, academics, and journalists, they made these gigantic bets, right? Which is why the brainwashed folks in your life who still believe them, believe them. Well, the way you hold them to it is you hold them to those bets. They shoved in, they did all in bluffs, as, as my colleague Tim Barber likes to say, they went all in. 
to ensure, um, and we need to, to treat them as if they indeed went all in, which they did. This is why we won't forget. They lost those bets because they were wrong. They didn't have the right to do the civil rights violations in the first place. There was no associated evidence backing it up. Their reputations should and will, if we have our way, be in ruins. That was your science moment.